I am opening the meeting of the planning committee of January 11th. And Deborah, if you could do roll call. Certainly, Hamaji here. Bentley is excused. Hines here. Meehan here. Okay. Were there any changes to the minutes of December 14th's meeting? All right, seeing none, we'll say they're approved. And Deborah, can you start us with the residence forum? Certainly. So residents have up to two minutes to address the committee. The committee does not directly answer questions posed by speakers during the residence forum, but it does hear the viewpoints and ideas presented and members do consider them as they act during the meeting. Speakers must conduct themselves with proper decorum, consistent with community standards that would not be offensive to a reasonable person as determined at the sole discretion of the JIRA board. Participants may not engage in personal attacks, threats of any kind, or any other disruptive behavior. Speakers violating these rules may be expelled from the meeting and precluded from speaking at future meetings as determined by the board. If you're here in person, please complete a forum slip and give me the slip. Any handouts or notes should also be provided. Anybody on Zoom, if you wish to participate, you can raise your hand or press star nine if connecting by phone. Please wait your turn and once I'm muted, state your full name and Rossmore address. Once the residence form has begun, additional resident comments will not be considered. So first up, if you wouldn't mind coming to the end of the table so we can capture your voice on recording, Mina Davenport. Hi, thank you for having us here. I was going to talk about Golden and Rain and Ty's Creek, but that's probably pretty well known. So I'm going to talk about... Mina, could I just ask you to project your voice a little bit? Oh. The mic is here, oh, okay. so we need it to be recorded. Okay, I was going to talk about Ty's Creek and Golden Rain, but that's pretty well known. So I decided to talk about Oakmont Drive where it comes into Ty's Creek. And I don't know how many times I've been crossing the street, push the button, use the flags. People see me, once in a while they stop and they go, a lot of times they don't even stop. And I, I don't know how to change that intersection. I wish I had some kind of bright idea, but unfortunately I haven't come up with one yet. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Next up we have Lynn Carruthers. Please come up to the table. Yeah. My name is Lynn Carruthers. Good morning. I live at 3152 Tice Creek Drive, apartment eight, entry seven. I'm here this morning with a group of members of Neighbors for Safer Streets to show our support for the pedestrian and vehicle safety study that is included in the capital improvement budget. Neighbors for Safer Streets exists to raise the awareness of the safety issues on the sidewalks and streets of our community. And we are here today to raise yours. The world has changed dramatically since the last study was done in 2016. More e-vehicles of all sizes and shapes are on our streets. Residents are still reeling from being trapped in their homes for two years, and technology in cars and on streets has changed dramatically. Our hope that the study that Tom Cashin is proposing will have all kinds of recommendations for changes, improvements, and policies. I'd like to read a quickie from Suzanne Curtis, 1780 Stanley Dollar Drive, who's unable to join us this morning. I always work till after dark at the ceramic studio. And although I understand the low lights in the parking lot, I don't think they are adequate when crossing from Peacock into the lot. It is even worse than the rain. I'm always looking over my shoulder to make sure someone isn't driving down the parking lane in the run, wrong direction, even during daylight. I personally feel very vulnerable there, though I do very much like the stop for pedestrians cone. Thank you for having us this morning. Thank you. Next up, we have Therese Welter. Hi, I'm Therese Welter. I live at 1333 Running Springs Road, number three. And I'm part of the Safer Streets Committee. And um, my corner is the corner of Stanley Dollar and Tice Creek. And it's a very busy corner. And I also have uh, the corner of Running Springs and Tice Creek. Um, I have two issues. One, both of them have to do with resident education. Um, the, the striped crosswalks are a great improvement. However, 
we seem to have a lot of walkers and a lot of drivers who don't get it, don't know what they're supposed to do when they get to those strike crosswalks. And I had an experience just yesterday where the woman had a dog. She was at the corner of um, Rock Ledge and um, Tice Creek. Uh, she had walked out into the, it was it's striped. She had walked out into the intersection, I would say about a fourth. There was tons of flags right next to her that she could have grabbed to identify herself that she was crossing. She didn't do that. And I was coming from the golden rain. So I thought, well, this is an accident waiting to happen. I'm stopping. But the people were not stopping that were coming from, from the Stanley Dollar location. And that happens all the time. Uh, so I don't know what we can do to educate people because it's drivers that are not slowing down and making uh, adjustments and don't seem to understand. Yeah, 15 the, seconds. Oh, just don't, don't understand the striped uh, crossings and also residents that are not using the flags. <laughs> so, thank you. Next, we have Bill Leary. Good morning. I'm here uh, on behalf of this effort to get a safety study. Uh, a few quick stories. I live at Entry 9 on Terra Granada, where Avenida Sevilla uh, joins it. Uh, the stop signs there are treated as mere suggestions. Um, we, we especially have a lot of drivers. They come out of Entry 10. They feel they've already stopped once, so they don't need to stop again. Worse, they come down from up the hill around Entry 9, and coming downhill, they speed up. They get to the stop sign. This is early in the morning when an awful lot of people are out walking their dogs. Some of them even get into the left lane so that they can go around and turn right into Avenue to be a little bit faster. It's an extremely dangerous um, intersection. Um, another story is when you put the new stop signs in at Ptarmigan. I happen to be at that intersection walking um, early that morning and the first car I saw zoomed heading uh, north right through the new stop sign, despite the sawhorses that you had there. The very next car zoomed coming from the opposite direction right through the stop sign, almost hitting a car that was coming out of Ptarmigan. So I called Securitas to say, you guys need more signs. This is brand new and people are violating. I called Jeff Matheson with a message on his phone that you needed to do that. Fortunately, later that morning, he was covered with saw, with saw horses. Um, treatment of uh, golf cart drivers by impatient uh, drivers rear-ending them uh, is an issue that needs to, to be studied more as well. And a friend of mine last night just got his car hit parked time. outside the tennis course by somebody who kept going. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Kathy Montgomery. Good morning. Uh, I'm Kathy Montgomery. I live at 925 Terra California, number five. Uh, recently moved there from Carmigan, and one of the reasons we moved was because of the uh, heavy traffic there and and um, I that intersection at Tice Creek and Tarmigan well that's where we're, one person got hit and has had to move um, and the, the stop sign which is that it doesn't really help some people stop but a lot of people make us just a suggestion so I have, I'm here to support the pedestrian and vehicle safety study and to read for Susan Cordelia, who's at 2624 Tarmigan number three. I live on Tarmigan and came down to the bottom of the street and stopped at the stop sign. A white SUV, female driver, on my left just blew through the stop sign at a regular speed, probably 30 miles per hour without a care in the world. I blared my horn at her so hopefully she would look at the intersection 
more closely next time she passes through. So scary to think that I had trusted they were going to stop. I would have been broadsided. So this is uh, similar to things that I've observed. And it's scary. I mean, I tell people whenever they come on to, to Rossmore property, drive the translate because your life really is dependent on it. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the residence forum. Okay. No online speakers? No online speakers. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate your coming forward and speaking. Um, the chair's report. Um, I just want to introduce Jory. She's our new admin, and she'll be uh, coordinating the minutes and agendas for these meetings going forward after she gets used to the whole system. And we welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other than that, um, I don't really have anything else. Uh, but I do want to let the speakers know that uh, today we're going to be talking about different capital projects and the safety safety plan, the study for the safety traffic safety is going to be addressed at least twice with the full board. So you will be hearing it again and you will also have another opportunity to speak if you wish. Thank you. Um, and then I, the capital project update is something that we do every week, every month, uh, giving an update on what's going on currently with all the projects. And Today, we're talking about capital projects in general a little later. So if there's any questions, we could address those specifically from board members um, or committee members. But otherwise, I think we're just going to move ahead. So Cheryl or Carol, yeah. board members, Maxine, can you, can you speak up here? I was just questioning, was the... Um, Study for the food service on there. Did I That's going to be in February. February. Okay. That's all I need. Thank you. Everybody else okay? All right. <clears throat> all right. So we'll move on. And then I'm going to reschedule things a little bit. I'd like to talk about 8A. Uh, Fred, if you're willing, you want to go pickleball first? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll be up the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. that. That'd be great. Uh, well, it's uh, good to see everyone again. I haven't been here in a while. Um, but rest assured that a lot has been happening uh, behind the scenes. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna jump right in to what's going on now, and then we'll talk about um, what we're projecting over the next few months for progress. So uh, yeah, well, thank you, Deborah. For, um, so we have produced the permit submittal. This is gonna be the building permit submittal set. This is it. 55 pages, uh, and which is part of it. I'm condensing it just to the floor plan. So everyone's been seeing all of the nice renderings and the color things, but we're now into the real stuff, the construction documents and how to build it and that type of thing. So if you go out to the, the uh, project site right now, you'll see a series of little flags. Sometimes you see them for irrigation and whatnot, little, little color things. That was uh, to map out the corners of the building and also to map out the irrigation line, because we always knew that there was a, um, a 16 inch high pressure irrigation line that runs underneath the uh, pickleball court, which cannot be there. We, we have to have that moved. So um, I'll be talking with Mark Heptig at the golf course uh, in the next couple of days to coordinate the um, irrigation uh, subcontractor. Now that we have it mapped out from the civil engineer, um, so now we know where things have to go and how far we have to push the irrigation line out. It's all, uh, like I said, this is all known since day one, since we started this, but uh, we're now actually starting to implement things. So that's what's going on currently. And then, um, Deborah, if you could uh, switch to the next slide. Ooh, did, did that, uh... hmm. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> it's not... Uh... Okay. Well, it's part of your packets. Deborah was able to uh, incorporate That's there. Strange. That is very strange. Yeah. Sorry. Is this Adobe? Um, it is. To make it uh, maybe the full second page. Yeah, there we go. Oh, thank you. Aha. That's a success. <laughs> so, um, 
I uh, wanted to go over some critical dates. Um, as I showed you before, this permit set uh, and the predecessor, which was the planning set, were uh, submitted to the city December 20th. Uh, the planning set is uh, it's a completely separate submittal to the city. The planning department looks at it for shape, size, uh, location, that type of thing, whereas the building department looks at it from a, a building code standpoint, accessibility, and that type of thing. They're related, but they are different. Planning went in way back in the, in the fall. So they came back to us and said, and had a, a whole bunch of questions. The architects then answered those questions and submitted it simultaneously with a building permit. So it's in for plan check right now. Just told Jeff that uh, I need a check for $25,000 for the plan check fees. <laughs> so, um, so they're working away. We don't know how long the city is going to take to, um, to review the drawings because it's an ebb and flow. We don't know how many other people are, are submitting plans at the same time. So from our experience, we're thinking the first round of plan check comments are gonna come back to us at the end of this month, end of January. And it's not a very complicated building, as you know. So we're hoping that the, the type and number of comments are gonna be fairly small and that the architects will be able to turn that around within about two weeks. So we're then looking at returning back to the city what we're hoping will be the final bid set um, at that time, which is gonna be mid-February. With that set of drawings, the, we should have the most up-to-date information which then we can give to contractors to bid. And the bidding process, again, for something of this size, will take about three to four weeks, about a month. But we also know that contractors always ask for more time <laughs> because they get the plans and they really start, to, they don't start looking at it till like three weeks in, which gives them you know, some time to concentrate. Uh, we build that in. So we figure that the, uh, the uh, bids will be due to us. You'll know the price by the end of March is our projection, which should help with uh, the capital improvement budget overall. You'll know how much needs to be allocated. So um, with that said, if we have a bid uh, price to us by the end of March, there's gonna be about two weeks of final checking, developing the contract, um, looking at all the different aspects of the, the uh, construction and the details. We're hoping then by mid-April to have uh, the contractor on board, uh, contract signed, ready to go. And then it takes the contractor about two weeks to start getting their subcontractors together, subcontracts within themselves, and the mobilization, two, three weeks, something like that. So we're looking at probably towards the um, end of April to uh, start breaking ground, which I, is ideal for, um, from a perspective of grading, because uh, typically in this area, uh, Bay Area, rain stops about March, maybe goes into April a little bit. That way we're not having to treat the soil. Uh, if you go, if you're working with wet soil, it's, it's not worth it. It's just a, an expense that you don't want to incur. So our timing actually with this is, is working out very, very well. And I know what people are going to ask me. So then, when's it going to be done? <laughs> and I can't tell you yet. And the reason why, the reason why, and there is a, there's a, a lot of logic to this. This permit set is for the overall building. But if you remember how this is designed, we have a steel structure. We call it a butler building. That's a separate permit that's intertwined with this. That's all steel. And we don't have any control, we being the owner and, and the design team, until the contractor gets on board. Because when the contractor gets on board, they can start ordering the steel. And that's the critical point, is when we know when the steel is delivered and fabricated, or fabricated and delivered, then we can start the time clock and know the projection of, at the end. We can give you some general feeling, and then, you know, if someone were to ask, well, Fred, you know, I need a, time, a date, I would say fall at this point, sometime fall 2024. But to, to dial down some exact and very close dates, um, that is, I wouldn't want to do that to give you any sense of accuracy at this point. But we'll, we'll have it soon, in a month or so. Uh, when you said fall, 
is that when the steel's coming or when the building would be done? We're hoping that's when the building would be done. Okay. We're hoping because um, so I was telling someone earlier that um, we're all familiar with the material shortage problem we had during COVID. Mm -hmm. Things are getting better. Um, it's still bad, but for like electrical components and that type of thing. But you know, the shipping has gotten through. You, you don't really hear the, uh, the big problems we used to hear. So we're hoping that, um, and we have a, the uh, fabricator and the, the supplier is very close. They're in Benicia. So um, I don't know where they get their steel from, but it's, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we're optimistic that it should be pretty good, but I don't want to venture a guess yet. We've been through things like this before. Yeah, all right, exactly. <laughs> we get it. You get it, exactly. So um, I don't know if you have any questions for? Yeah, I just wanted to hear again, like I've forgotten, the, the building goes up first and then the solar? Or uh, No, actually the, the sequence will be grading. So mm -hmm. if you go out there and you see the flags and you see the, the soil is not level. So uh, we have to do all the grading prep first. Then the slab will go in. Uh, with the playing surface, and then all the, the steel connections at that point. Um, and then at that point, the, uh, the building gets put in, and simultaneously, as soon as that uh, metal roof is on, I talk to the solar people, and they want to be up there when the contractors are working. And um, yeah, so it won't be a one-two thing, it'll oh, be combined. Okay. Okay. And that's all been built into the documents. All right. Any other questions? Okay, say no. I think we're good. We're Thank good. you, Frank. Great. Thank you. And I don't know if there's anything else now that is Anne's absent, Jeff. Yeah, if you want to, if you're able to. Oh, sure. As, as, as much as I can report, sure. And okay, we're going to move on to um, seven, back to 7A, uh, finalizing the prioritization of the capital budget. And so we've been looking at this for a couple of months now. And, Jeff, I just have to say, this yeah, is great. That's uh, yeah, amazing. This summary of every project. Save that for next year because it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And whoever did it, I have to thank them. Um, <clears throat> all right, starting out, <clears throat> committee members, um, let's start with. Can I start with uh, the. Or maybe Jeff, you want to. Uh, <clears throat> 7A1. Yeah, please. Okay. All right, so uh, the, the credit for this really does go to Amatola. She did a lot of work in, in putting this together with, with Tom and Hand and his team uh, and all of her team in gathering the information on all of the projects that I'd like to get into more detail with here in a minute, but just to go over the, the cash projections, which we didn't have at your last meeting. That I think are uh, an important starting point. What you're looking at here on the screen is is somewhat of the summary, and then next we'll look at the more detailed view of the funding model. Uh, but what we did is the beginning balance for 2023, as was reported uh, back in January of 2023, was eight million six twenty eight four fifty five. During the year, we received revenue from uh, membership transfer fees of $5,350,000. There's other revenue that comes into the trust. Some of that is um, interest income and some other minor uh, uh, revenue throughout the year that totaled 492. And then the medical center deposits, this, was, uh, this is something we're still refining it a little bit. In 2022, we received 750,000 in deposits. Of that, 350 was, was booked as a liability because we didn't have those funds actually released yet. And then in 2023, we received 650,000 in deposits and release of the escrow account. So we just, we need to verify that 350, uh, but it's either a million two or a million 25 or 350 less than that, but we'll, we'll refine that before the finance committee. So your total revenue then is approximately 6,800,000. 
capital projects last year, we spent 2,633,853, and that is actual plus projections for what's been committed and what we anticipate will come through billing wise uh, through the end of December. Machinery and equipment, same thing, 487 is based on what we've committed to purchase or received already. Our debt service is the 2 million on the three outstanding loans. We have separated out the medical center expenses and then also we're tracking the uh, resources that were received on, on the other sheet, but we're, we're separating out all of the capital projects up above fall into the capital projects for 2,600. The medical center, the 300,000, that accounts for the um, fees we paid to Colliers, as well as the uh, study for 160,000 that we did with ELS that totaled us to 300. So we're tracking the expenses for that. On that. So on previous spreadsheets, we saw 160 for medical expenses, a uh, medical center expenses. So 300 is the actual for 2020. So we took out the 160 for the study with ELS plus the 140 for the um, fees we paid to Collier's totaling the, the 300,000. Okay. So that gives us total expenditures for 2023 of uh, 5,460 with the ending balance of 10 million. We have our ongoing reserve that we're building with adding 250,000 a year to it. So it's currently uh, at 3,250. That leaves us with available cash of 6,785. Now that's significantly more than when we were looking at this before because there's a number of projects, mainly pickleball, that was approved in 2023, but we didn't get to. So we're rolling those, those funds. We actually only spent 2,633. If you go up to 2024, then your beginning fund balance is just over 10 million. Uh, revenue from MTFs. Now this is a little bit of a wild card. Uh, we based it on the 450 sales based on the increase in the fee. It goes up $500 uh, every year currently. And we don't we don't know exactly if we're going to hit that 450. There's some variables there right now in, in the reality market uh, with interest rates, but also with the whole insurance uh, impacts where we're not at 100% replacement value. That may impact mortgages, which may impact sales. So that's a, a little bit of a, a, a unknown at this time. Other revenue, again, is based on, um, you know, interest and, and other uh, resources. So we're anticipating having total revenue of 6,350 uh, going through 2024. Our capital projects based on the list that's included in your packet that we'll go through momentarily comes to uh, 6,666. And then machinery and equipment, which uh, is not in this packet, but was in your last packet. And we can go through that detail again. It's, it's just, just under 660. Debt service, again, on the three loans, 2 million. We're uh, recommending 500,000 for continued work on the medical center in, in terms of developing plans and specs for uh, an actual project. So total expenditures under the plan, if everything was approved, would come to uh, 9,838,000, giving you an ending balance of 6,500,000. We take out the additional 250 for to continue to build the reserve, uh, so 3,500,000. That leaves you an ending cash balance of 3,047,000. Now, again, the other wild card is, we, as Fred just mentioned, we won't know for uh, uh, several months and what the actual cost of the pickleball project will be. You'll show here, I'll show here in a minute what we're budgeting based on carryover from 2023, but we don't have bids. So we don't know, will it come in higher, lower? Sure, it won't come in lower. We can guess. <laughs> <laughs> it won't come in higher. We, we just, we don't know. But you can see at, at 3 million for our available cash after we take out the reserve, 
we're in pretty good standing still. Mm -hmm. uh, it, again, that's based on membership transfer fees received. Going into 2025, uh, we, we again go through our, our revenue. Um, if there's any further adjustments in the MTF that would impact that. Our capital projects starting in 2025, it's not complete. We, we don't know everything that's going to. We're gonna recommend some studies also in 2024 that will help us build 2025. But you can see right now, based on what we have, you would still have an ending balance of 3 million six. Where it starts to get a little squirrely is 2026. And that is because that's when we're starting to project uh, construction for the medical center. And we have that split over two years at, at 5 million uh, per year. So a total project estimate of 10 million. That is a complete wild card right, right now, uh, just a, an estimate. We will be able to refine that further as we get the, the studies done um, and design work done by ELS in, in 2024, if you approve that. So that's where borrowing would need to start to take place in 26, 27, if, if that project was done at that time or adjustments to the MTF or other, other resources, which we'll talk about here a little bit later in your agenda. So that's kind of the overview. Yeah, well, it's looking a lot better than last time. A little week. bit better than last yeah. time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> couple of questions under 2023 the revenue from the membership transfer fee that's a actual figure yes and did you base that on the 450 or the lowered 420 for 2023 yeah uh, that was based on what we actually oh i'm sorry actually sold. that's right that's right 2024 is still based on 450 okay but we increased the transfer fee by 500 because that's the, the action we're taking but you're using that, that is something finance committee is going to be analyzing, uh, you know, and we have to really consider what the impact of, you know, if we have to go to all cash basis. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you, committee members have any questions at this point? Um, Carol, no? Um, what did you mean if we have to go to an all cash basis? So one of the, the concerns with not having 100% replacement value I got insurance. Yeah. lending uh, mortgages may not be possible, in which mm -hmm. case anybody buying into Rossmore would have to buy with all cash. Mm -hmm. that works. So how much of a contingency is in the budget for the pickleball ballpark? Contingency? Oh, contingency for, yeah. right oh, for budget protections? Yeah. Uh, when we did this earlier, about 15%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's pretty standard. That's, right? that's pretty standard at, at okay. the time we did it. That's right. Yeah. As we get closer, more accurate, um, yeah. it'll drop. Oh, sure. Yeah. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I yeah. really, Dwight, did you have something? Dwight, you have a I question? did. Yeah. I do. For some reason, the raise hand feature is not working for me. Um, so, you know, one of the things the board did in previous months was to identify medical center uh, proceeds as a set aside. And I don't want to lose track of that. So uh, could we add under that reserve requirement the amount that the balance that remains on medical center? So, for example, in 2023, as opposed to available cash of six point seven million subtract a 1.1 million set aside, it's actually 5.6. Uh, and moving forward to 24, the available cash is actually 2.4 million. I don't, we don't want to lose sight of that set aside. That needs a lot of further discussion. Uh -huh. it, it's just from, from our tracking, it, that's kind of gotten muddled. It, it <clears throat> should be a straightforward line that you just track similar to the reserve requirements uh, and then you subtract out from that the ongoing medical center expenses so 300,000 in 2023 500 in 2024 and then if you get into all the way down to 2026 you've depleted that uh, it it just it, it was muddling our process but it it can be added if that's a an interest so you guys understand that yeah yeah i understand 
So, if, like we're thinking so, of putting in a set aside, a set aside one, aside one. And so going to Dwight's question, um, is the 2024 ending available cash 3 million or 2 million? So the, the available uh, cash, cash, if you took out the, so at 20, if you took out the medical center reserve, it would lower your available cash from 6 million seven. So five million six eighty five, and then twenty twenty four, it would be two million four four seven. But of course, Jeff, as you point out, some of the numbers are soft: <laughs> yeah. revenue, interest, income. Um, but it still certainly looks better than last month. And building on what Carol just said. We want to maintain that two million available cash, so we'll have right. to keep an eye on that. Okay, so when we go through the capital projects, should we be thinking that Less. they that what is presented today equals will leave two million for, or so the the goal always is at the available cash balance to be at $2 million. Yeah. Okay. And right now we're showing uh, for 2023, we're at 6.7. So we're in good shape going into 2024. Uh, at the end, we're looking at a balance of, of 3 million 47. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're in good shape until we get to 2026 when we're looking at that significant medical center project. You know, the timing of that, you know, we, we don't have anything in 2025. There's a lot of variables still that will be considered as we move closer to that. Can we talk about that uh, finance also? Yeah, I think that's more of a... So can we go to the next attachment, um, 7A2? And this gives a little more precise detail on the various projects. And, and we'll get into the specifics on the projects here individually in, in a minute. but. This funding model um, is something that was started to be developed with our facility master plan, and we've refined it quite a bit uh, to use it more as a, a tool for, for tracking projects uh, ongoing. So you'll see at the top the list of projects that were actually approved and initiated in 2022. They were carried over into 2023. Some of those, like pickleball, uh, and the, the Gateway Studios will even be carried into 2024. Our big construction projects, they take a while to initiate. So like the Gateway Studio projects, uh, we're anticipating that we need to carry forward 140,000 uh, into 2024 to complete that. The pickleball courts were carrying forward 2.397. Again, we don't have bids. Is that gonna be sufficient? Is that gonna to need to be, be bumped up? We just don't know until we get those final bids in and, and can develop a final project budget. Um, the Tice Creek pool uh, roof structure. This has been around for a while. Why do we have a hole in the roof at Tice? Um, I'm sure nobody has heard that question. <laughs> no, but, never. Uh, it is still pending uh, permits with, with the city. We've had to do some engineering work to submit uh, those. So we're carrying forward that funding into 2024 of 137,000 still. Uh, the transfer pump project's been around for a while now. Uh, the pump is, uh, I believe, on, on order, but that is something that would carry forward. Uh, the solar array projects, we just got some good news on, on that from solar technologies that uh, PG&E is starting to progress, uh, and we, we think we'll be able to actually start to make some headway with that. We'll have more uh, hopefully next month on that. And then we get into 2023 projects that were funded uh, and you'll see which ones are complete and some are again carrying forward into 2024. The GenArc replacement project, we are under contracts. There's still a, a, additional contracts to be had. Uh, we anticipate carrying forward 781,000. 
the uh, golf drought projects, this is one where uh, initially there was, I think, 230 approved. We reduced it, or 250 approved. It was reduced during the year to 130. We anticipate that we'll spend all of that in uh, 2023, but we're uh, proposing another 150 worth of projects in 2024 uh, that we'll get into. Buckeye tennis courts, we've talked to you several times about that. This is one where we initiate, uh, plan on doing the surfacing for courts one through six in 2024. So we're carrying that funding forward into 2024. And then when we get to 2025, you'll have consideration of additional uh, amounts. The rest of the list there are projects that were completed in, in 2023. Um, but when we get down to uh, median turf replacement, that is one where we, we had 80,000, we didn't spend all of it. So there's significant uh, savings there, but we're projected to do the next phase in 2024. So we have 65,000 budgeted and then a, a final phase in 25. And then the full list of projects that are new for 2024 that we'll be uh, talking to about uh, with some additional slides here in a second. And that gets us down. We start to then review the, the total. You'll see the machinery and equipment total uh, for next year at just under 660. Gives you our total of spend of 7 million three. Uh, we do have separated again, the medical center in the green where we spent 300,000 in 2023. We're projected to spend 500. Mm -hmm and then 5 million and 5 million. We're just, we're trying to highlight those expenditures and separate them out. On the second page, you see uh, the deposit reserve balance in green of a million 25. So again, we can track it, but again, we can add that to the other page too, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, just a question on the medical center expenses. Uh, never mind, got it. Any questions on the detail here? Um, I do have a, quite a few, but committee members? No. Okay. Um, first of all, going down to line 25, pedestrian and vehicle safety project, the study. Um, I, I would guess that's more of an operating expense. It's not really a capital expense. And we don't know that it's going to be a capital expense. So studies that lead to capital expenses, we've traditionally capitalized uh, with the, the theory that those will lead to capital. It's kind of like doing the, the plans mm -hmm. for a, a project. Um, but if nothing materializes out of that, then Usually we. So you're anticipating major capital changes with as a result of the study. So where you see, you know, some listing of a few projects in 2025 and beyond, those that's not a, a full list. We don't know what's going to come. There's a few studies. So we have the uh, pedestrian gate study only. We have the study for the pond, um, the irrigation pond on the golf course. We don't know exactly what those will lead to as far as expenditures in uh, 2025. We have a placeholder, but you know, that's what the, the intent of the study is. And usually those studies we capitalize as they're anticipated to lead to a, a capital project. Did we do that with the 2016 study? I believe so. I, I'll need to verify, but I believe so. Right, yeah, I did verify that. That'd be great. That, so that's an overall comment. Um, <clears throat> all right, two have a long vision and looking toward 2027, 2026, 2027, where things get a little more dicey. We're talking about medical center construction. Um, 
I'm actually recommending, even though we have the money for everything, I'm recommending either deferring or reducing the costs of some of the projects. And one is number nine. Do you want to get into the next attachment, um, 784? Which, okay. if you look at actually 7A5, starts to talk about the priority listing and, and we ranked them right. uh, and also indicated like what quarter those would happen in or if they could even slide to 2025 if, if need be. But then if you want to talk about modifications to those, we can individual All right. so, as well. <clears throat> okay. Seven, eight, twelve. Oh, you want to look at that first? Yes, no, we're less than. That's good. So this is seven eight five, where it lists the capital projects that uh, we're proposing by priority. For example, the Gateway Studios, it's under contract. There's very little. It's priority one. Pickleball, we're in uh, plan check. Again, priority one. The guys pull roof structures, same thing. We're moving those forward. The transfer pump, kind of the same thing. Gen arc, same thing. The golf bridge replacement is something that we're continuing to do the scoping study on uh, because there's so many agencies involved. Uh, so we recommend that as priority one to continue on. Uh, the network gear replacement, this is all of that IT equipment that we need for our, our operation and for bringing on um, you know, more sophisticated systems like the, the generic replacement. That is a, a priority one. And um, the Tice pool and spa replastering, really you want to get that done in the first quarter. Uh, whether we can actually pull that off mm -hmm. is probably a, a question mark. Um, but it's a, a high priority to do to keep that pool going. The land use planning we'll talk about in another uh, agenda item. I don't know that that's really a, a priority one that, that can, mm -hmm. that's up for discussion. Um, the Buckeye tennis court resurfacing, that would probably happen uh, the second quarter just due to weather. You want things to be dried out, uh, but the surfacing you know, is, is ready for, is, is past when it should be done. The uh, event center, it, priority two, we would do that in the second quarter. Again, this really is, is needed to keep our, our systems running and, and be able to offer the programming that we currently do. Uh, we need that, that equipment to continue to run. The pavement program typically starts in the spring, sometimes moves into the, the fall, but we have that as a priority too, uh, and is you know, an ongoing annual program. The roof replacement, again, we have as a priority too. This is the skylight at Tice, uh, the fitness center. This is part of the original uh, structure. This is Fred's fault. To blame him. <laughs> no. We debated this skylight when we were doing the construction, uh, and we thought, eh, it could last a little bit longer. <laughs> so, uh, but it is time. It's it, that was we were discussing this back in 2017, so it's ready. Uh, it made it as far as it can. Uh, the median turf, let's see. Then we start getting into priority three. These are things where, you know, it'd be good to uh, initiate this year, but if they need to slide, they, they can. Medium turf replacement, I believe it's by 2027, we have to have non-functional turf, especially median turf replaced. Uh, but that could slide if we wanted it to. The golf course pump replacement, this is a little bit of a, a unknown. They've done some maintenance on it. It's past its expected life. If it goes down, we got to do it no matter what. Uh, so it's better to plan for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're anticipating that being quarter three. 
We don't want to do it peak irrigation season. So that's the most dependent factor. Um, the Gulf Lake Liner, this is to do this study to help us really evaluate what we have, what we need to do, uh, what our options are uh, that, that could push. We have some leaks we know about, uh, but if it had to, to push, it could, but it's better to know that what we're going to be facing in the future. The medical center, uh, again, we would initiate with uh, ELS to begin the plans. This would probably bridge a, a couple of years in developing those, those plans and documents. Um, Gateway Solar Array, we just did get some updates. Uh, so that, that may actually move up, but there's not really a expense for us on that other than the, the <clears throat> some consulting fees, but it, where that ends up landing really doesn't impact. The golf drought projects that we're proposing for 2024, uh, it would take place in the fall, but could, if if we needed to, we could certainly slide those. The, the recent uh, weather we've received last year and so far this year look, look promising for drought. Uh, the dollar clubhouse patio improvements and landscaping, again, if, if need be, we think that's one that could uh, push Pedestrian vehicle safety study. This is again, the study only that uh, was referred to. We'd like to do that in 24. It can happen later in the year, um, can happen sooner if, if it's a higher priority. Uh, <clears throat> but when that happens in 2024 or even moving into 2025 is, is really uh, up to you. The vehicle gate at, at Rockview, we split this out. This used to be one project, the gate at Rockview and the pedestrian gates at the front. We split this out to be two. So the gate at Rockview, uh, you know, again, we've gone many years without it. We can continue. Uh, we, we recommend doing that uh, based on some of the incidents we've had with RVs and, and others, but that could slide. Uh, the MOD underground fuel tank is certainly one that we, we need to understand what our future is going to be and what those costs and options may be. But uh, again, based on our type of tanks that we have, we have a little more time, uh, but we'd like to initiate that in quarter four or early 2025. So that's pretty much the, the list as we've kind of reviewed and prioritized it, but certainly we can talk about individual projects. Uh, and then if you want to review the machinery and equipment in more detail, we can bring that up as well. Any question? Well, it looks like what we'll be talking about are the new things in 2024. And we can talk about anything. Well, yeah. that's where the decisions are going to be from like 20 down to, let's see, it, 29. Yeah, 33. Okay, all the way to 33. To talk about either putting them to 2025 or decreasing them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, should we just go down them? Sure. Starting with 20. Another option you have, not to interrupt, yeah, but another, is to look at what we put as a prior, priority one as an initial approval process. And then before making decisions on what to do with the remainder, we can come back once we know the pickleball bids, once we know, start to have a good sense of what uh, membership transfer fees may or may not have an impact, uh, where those are gonna be. And then you'll have a little more information to base those decisions on. Uh, so like we would, we really need to know priority one items fairly, we, we would like to have those approved by the board by the end of this month so we can continue spending and, and planning. I, I don't have any conflict with the priority um, one items yeah. listed. No, I don't no. either. Okay. I mean, I think they're all priority one. Do we the need a motion to move yeah, that forward? Yeah. 
If you had a motion to uh, approve for the board to approve priority one projects um, in January that for us to proceed, that would be good. Okay. That would include land use planning. If, if you want to oh, take yeah, that, out, that out, you can split that out. You can split that out if yeah. you, you would like. So, yeah, let's split that one out. Someone want to make one? Did you want to split out? The, the 20,000 uh, for the land, the use, land use planning. planning Thank you. Priority. Yeah. Um, let's see here. It's the right terms. I'll move. Help me with the language. Uh, <laughs> priority I one, priority one listed. Proceed that the board approve that the board board approved list. priority one projects listed. Projects listed with the exception of land use planning, or do we have to? Yeah. No, okay. With the, the exception of land use planning. Okay. I mean, should we call that priority three or four? What the land use planning? Yeah. We're I think we're it. going to talk about it separately. Okay. So it's not really a priority. Yes. You know what I mean? I, I do. Yeah. I do. So. Okay. Is there a second? I second. And just to make it official, roll call, please. Of course. <laughs> Hamaji? Yes. Hi. Yes. Mehan? Yes. It is unanimous. And we do that for Zoom, correct? Or for the record? It's for the record. Okay. It's in the minutes, but it's good for me too if I need to reflect back. Okay, sure. Thank you. All right. Let's so should we move on to priority two then? Sure. Okay, let's look at those. But there's more specific detail starting in seven eight six. If you want to look about each individual project. Um, um, unfortunately, they're not shown in priority order, so you got to kind of jump right, around. Right, you got to jump bit. a little bit, but that's okay. All right. So but really, tennis. we're we're looking at Buckeye Tennis Court resurfacing uh, that was originally budgeted in 2023. Uh, we carried that forward after discussions with you in regards to court seven and eight. Mm -hmm. At this point, we're somewhat separating those two courts out and proceeding with courts one through six uh, with resurfacing, and then we'll tackle seven and eight uh, in 2025. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Um, my feeling is go ahead with all of the quarter two. I, I, I hesitate to say this, but I wonder if we have to defer the tennis court resurfacing. Uh, Anne told us that it wasn't a safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, this is one that's somewhat similar to your your street repair and replacement. You start to get cracks, you start to get water infiltration. The longer you wait, the more damage it, it could be. You have to do resurfacing on your tennis courts about every seven years. We're at, uh, I think, by year 10. So it's not, it's an annual or a scheduled maintenance type of program that you really should do. Mm -hmm. Seven and eight, where we're talking about the yeah, uh, impact of the iron in the asphalt and the grading of that, how far we want to take those, that's that's certainly a further discussion item. But just the routine, I, I wouldn't recommend putting that off. I'm going to go back to my, my statement I made before. I, I really... I understand that. I know we've already pushed the re, uh, resurfacing out one year beyond. But I feel like there are certain things here with it. We could maybe defer um, for the long term to get more money available when we do decide to do the medical center to have less financing needed. Um, We'll let that one go right now, but I, I think we need to have that long term in mind. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the things I'm going to say today are probably not going to be well received. But. All right, let's move on to priority three. 
So that one starts with uh, project 10, the median turf replacement. Uh, again, this is continuing on with the area in front of the gate. And then we have the one additional uh, section in 2025. Uh, I believe by 2027 is when the mandate is for all medians and, and non-functional turf to be replaced. So we're just continuing in, in that and carrying forward the design that's you see already on Rossmore Parkway. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with the uh, golf course. Is that on here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so uh, the next one is the golf uh, course pump replacement. I, I talked about that one already. It's, if it goes, we're into that no matter what. Um, and we don't want it to go during peak irrigation season. <laughs> and the, then the lake liner study that could, that could push if, if need be, but what it does is gives us information on what we're looking at long-term cost-wise. Uh, and then the medical center uh, design, it's a, it's a building that is sitting vacant right now. Um, the longer a building sits vacant, the more you probably have to do to it and, and concern over you know, its, its condition. Uh, this gives us, again, continuing the planning tools. So long-term, we know, is it gonna be a $10 million renovation? Will we have opportunity to lease out a portion of the, the building once we do the renovation? It gives us more information, certainly, to work with as we proceed. Okay, the median turf replacement. Uh, we need a lot in 65 for that. That leads to water savings as well. Yes. So there's a real side benefit to that, big side benefit. Um, the golf course pump replacement, you, you said that it's not in need right in this moment, but it could break and then we need to replace it later. Um, how does that weigh with medium turf replacement and water savings, like in your head? It, as long as it's still running, but again, I don't have it. Fred, have you looked into that one? I talked to, to Mark a little bit about it. What it is is that there are two pumps um, and uh, they've gone past their scheduled useful life, mm -hmm. uh, but they have the manufacturer come out and do an evaluation. And it turned out that they're not as bad as they thought. So that's why the, the thinking is, is that it, it could be pushed out a little bit, but you never know because back to the thing of being past its useful life, it could break. Okay. And if it breaks, it's it's bad because the, during the peak yeah. irrigation season. That's not so, one we want to be down in trying to scramble to find replacements and schedule and we're weeks without being able to irrigate. Uh, the golf course that could be a potential yes would an option be to move it to fourth quarter you know when exactly it would be done would we'd want to hit the window so it's past the peak irrigation season uh and before the real rain season so we can get the trucks in there to do because you've got to actually lift the roof you gotta so you need a pretty so it's major control. Yeah, so you probably want to hit a pretty specific October window, I would think. That's right, yeah. So that's, that's what March. you're trying to hit is October to, area to, to March to replace. To replace it, that's right, yeah. And then and factoring in the order. Or, order yeah, that, that was delivery. my yeah. second question. I mean, I know we don't have the crystal ball to predict, but what is your estimate as far as order to delivery of the pump? That I don't know. I, I don't have that level of detail to find out. Uh, but Mark has, uh, Mark Heptig is uh, more dialed into that okay. than I am at this point. Okay. Leanne? Oh, oh sorry, Mary. Sorry, Mary. I have a question, a clarifying point on the pump replacement for the golf course is instead of replacement, is repair possible? So that's what they just had the manufacturer mm -hmm. out and uh, yeah. do an evaluation, but also continue to repair. And, and these get routine maintenance and contracts. Oh, sure. um, so everything we can to keep it going, certainly we we do. You do just hit a hit a point where it's. <laughs> yeah. How much past its useful life is it now? I think. Okay. Maybe a year. Was it two years? I don't remember that. I honestly okay. don't remember that. Somewhere in that range. Okay. 
Any other comments on priority threes? I had a question, Leanne. Yeah. Go ahead, Dwight. So uh, priority two includes pavement program. I'd love to hear the committee's thoughts on pavement program. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot pavement about that. is pretty yeah. big too. <clears throat> So if we go to the detailed page on right. going to be at the Where are you going? It's the level across the uh, it's page seven a twenty seven. Yeah. Or at the end. I'm sorry I missed that. I, I didn't want to comment on that. I like the visual. So for, we also have Martin here to answer specific questions, but for 2024, we have a, a million 227 uh, scheduled. And that uh, is to really do some specific work. Do you wanna kind of give an overview of what 2024 specifically would be looking at? Yeah, for next year. It is next year. So for this, this year. year. This year. <laughs> for this year on the list, um, there's three sections. If you want to hear what those exactly are. Yeah, please. We have the Golden Rain Road between Thai Street Drive and Oakmont Way, where last year with all those winter storms, we ended up with huge problems of groundwater drive it and you'll see it. We've been patching there for a couple of years. It needs more than just the asphalt replaced. It needs some work on the road base to put it in good shape for, for many years. Uh, upper Golden Rain, continue where we left off. <coughs> Approximately between entry six and entry 15. It's still very old pavement. It's starting to fall apart rapidly and Thai Street Drive between Singing Wood and Stanley Dollar Drive. That's a very old uh, piece of pavement as well. So it's where you come down the hill, well, you're heading northbound direction. And you can definitely feel that that's going uh, as well. And it, it really needs, it really needs uh, to be replaced. And then if you look into you know, 2025, 26, 27, mm -hmm. we're still at, at about, you know, the, the million two plus or minus range. And that is, again, continuing somewhat of a catch up model until we hit 2028. So prolonging some of this would build your expenses over 25, 26, 27. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that at all? What, what's coming after that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do it out at the top of my head. Um, near the entrance facility. That's, well, it's the most heavily used sure. piece of, of road in the valley, but um, that was last done with an inlay in 2005, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's an old piece of asphalt that really needs to be done between the defense center and the creek side. There, there are several areas that are way past due. So yeah, for the next three years, it was really trying to catch up. And also, since we had those years where you know, street maintenance got deferred, it seems to be a popular line item to be deferred. I know it's a larger amount of money, but it's really starting to fall apart and, and it's hard to try to keep it to a level where it should be at so that it's safe to drive on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what projects made up 655 for 2023? What we did last year, we did Skycrest Drive and we did uh, Upper Golden Rain Road between Skycrest and uh, approximately entry 16. And that was proposed for the year before Okay. Those were substantial projects, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to throw an idea out there. I, I think for 2024, at this point, I think we go with 
We try to lower it to 650, but at the same time, we get some, the board gets some sort of tour to see what you're talking about. We don't really know what you mean by the need to replace. Like, is it just a, you know, we need to see, I feel like we need to see what you're really talking about. Like why the need is there for those projects. I just don't. <laughs> you don't trust me? I, no, I trust you. It's just, I think it's a trust it's just like it's a, it's a huge amount of money. And if we can defer some of that, you said that it's commonly deferred. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, it's a little bit of why we're here is it, it has been commonly deferred and, and the year before last was deferred mm -hmm. and especially during the, the COVID years, somewhat due to escalation in, in oil prices, but also it was, we weren't having sales. So that's the item that was deferred. So that's why we're seeing this big catch up, which the more we defer, it's just gonna you know, push that on down, down the road. If instead of approving only half of this uh, now, this might be one of those items where you, you, you look at approving priority one, let's arrange for the tour in the next you know, several weeks and, and go out and, and do a, a field tour. Um, and then you can consider modifications like to it. the, rather than saying, let's only do half now. Yeah, I think that's I, better. I think that's better. I think that's better. And I don't mean to distrust you. No. It's and just as, as, I mean, we see other things that need repair. Like we, we realize things break and have to be fixed. But with pavement, we're driving around and as lay people, it looks pretty good. Feels good, except upper golden rain. No, no, so it's, it's really more bad. like a, it's an actual visual that we need to, to get it. So I have a question that may be impossible to answer. But you're talking about replacing road base on some of these projects, which... Well, that's that one area where we had problems with groundwater penetrating. So, okay. and it's kind of an exception. So, okay, that, that helps. Part of my question was how much of the road base necessity for repair is because we deferred this for too long versus other factors. And I think you just answered that. A part of this tour too, it could, I mean, we could certainly expand on the, the pavement, but maybe it would be helpful to see what do these pumps look like and why do you need to remove oh, the roof to yeah, get the to pumps. the pump? What is the pump liner issues? Where is it leaking? Where is the skylight and that we're talking about at, at Tice that is the issue? I mean, if, if you want to kind of get yeah. that visual on site, we could certainly do that. I think that would be really I helpful. think it would really be helpful. And I don't mean to... So we can kind of do a capital yeah, expenditure yeah. tour. Yeah, because yeah, I finally saw where the pumps are the other day. I mean, maybe because I'm on here, I'm more aware. But I finally realized this is like not just a little pump. It's like a huge building and, yeah. you know, so it's more substantial. I think a tour be helpful. Okay. might be really helpful. Merci. What do you think? Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. But how then, how do trees? I live on Upper Golden Rain. Thank you for making it. Yeah. I, I was like losing weight from the jiggles. <laughs> uh, how how does the how do the tree roots um, impact all of these roads? And why don't we ever talk about that? Or is that not something you talk about? And you just keep repairing the roads. I've certainly brought it up. Mm -hmm. That area is a known area. It's not the first time that I've had to deal with tree roots there, but bringing that up to you know the landscape manager will go to the mutual, and then the mutual doesn't want to lose their beautiful trees. trees. Uh, along Rossmore Parkway, uh, some golf course trees, same thing. We don't want to lose our trees. And all I can do is mention it and say, hey, this is causing a problem. And we still have several areas where that's the case, but 
And it's also not that easy <laughs> to just cut down trees and also not a no. good thing to just cut down trees. So, just thank you. Um, remember that presentation you gave us? Yeah, that was on, excellent. Yeah, that would be good to get a copy of so we could refresh our it's memory. It's online. It's um, online. It's online. It is online. Okay. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a great presentation. Given how many board members have asked about pavement, I, I think your idea, Jeff, is so we'll, a good one. If, if we could, then we would, based on your, your earlier motion, proceed with going to the board with uh, priority one uh, and then schedule a, a tour. Mm -hmm. We'll still be proceeding with the pickleball get better pricing, we'll do the tour, then we'll come back to the committee and work through finance and the board for priority two on through. Yeah. Uh, much better sense of... I, I think that's good, especially based on what's going on as far as the potential impact on the uh, okay. master trust. So the, the other component then would be the machinery and equipment. Oh. And I'm okay with I'm okay. Okay. So that's uh, no, I, I thought that I had a question. Did we already approve that? And I knew we didn't, but so we need to send that now. to the board as well. Yeah. Right. yeah, that would be good. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Motion. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you All go right. ahead. So we're doing. We've already made a motion for priority one. Correct. Okay. So, so now we're on machinery. Um, this is just for machinery and equipment. I move that the committee recommend to the board to approve the machinery and equipment um, budget as stated for a total of yep. okay, for a total of six hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. I believe it's actually 5,000 less than that because we're going to take off the public safety traffic equipment that really mm -hmm. needs to be purchased oh. out of uh, operating. Uh, okay, so it's six, six five, four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Six, five, four. Five, eight. Five, eight. Wait, could you say that again? What's the 5,000 or 10? Um, item number three was public safety traffic safety equipment and included replacing things like the flags and the, these are items under $5,000 each, so they wouldn't okay. be capitalized. Okay. Right. That was uh, an okay. okay. under current December right. spreadsheet, but I remember that. Okay. 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 So, so we're, we're looking at, we're, we're looking at the December 29th spreadsheet, which doesn't have, had already taken out the flag. Did it already? Okay. Line item. Yeah. So it is 659. So that should be, as far as I can tell. So oh, we'll, it we'll is. Validate. Okay. For sure. All right. So, okay. So it's not. Leanne, you have a question behind you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You're, you're mentioning the machinery. I have a hard number, but is there a listing of all the items that make up the number? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that is in the, the that's in the packet from December. Okay. So that's what you're referring to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just need to go find it. It did the December 14th assembly packet for planning committee. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Oh, so we need a second? Yes, please. Okay, second. I second. Uh, roll call? Certainly. Hamaji? Yes. Hines? Yes. Amiha? Yes. Unanimous. Leanne, could I interrupt? Yes, go ahead, Dwight. So uh, I'm wondering if there's something that the committee thinks should be moved to priority one that is not already identified as that. For example, we have the money set aside for the medical center and it's currently identified as a priority three. Is that something that the committee thinks should be considered as priority one? Why don't you elaborate um, a little more on yeah, that? Yeah, I, I have a question. Have we gotten the report from ELS that was doing the Capacity still. Where are we? Cancel on that. 
We haven't presented that. Have we received that I final think study? I think it's kind of still pending. We, pending. we should have that soon. Mm -hmm. um, we know that everything will fit. We know that this, the building is suitable um, without major concern with the foundation mm -hmm. and, and so forth, which was one of the main concerns. So Jeff, a follow-up to that is that if we've identified our need, then we potentially have identified a sublease availability. Correct. And, and so spending some money in 2024 may allow us to actually lease out some space and generate some revenue. Is that true? Um, that, that could be true, yes. So we I don't could, know that square footage well, off the top yeah, of my head, what, what I, our need would be. And, uh, and utilities. And too. utility costs. Yeah. I um, and whatnot. Yeah. Before we moved it to a priority one, I would like to have a lot more information on those uh, topics yeah. and some of the reports back. I'll check with, with Ann on the status of that report. Any other questions at this point? Um, I have a question um, for the pedestrian gate and the the gate up to the RV park. Mm -hmm. um, could that be moved to 2025 if you're trying to lower the total of this particular budget? So the pedestrian gate at the front, we have uh, in 2024 as the design only. Right. So we wouldn't implement and see the major cost until 2025 or, or beyond when you decide to do okay. it. Uh, but you can certainly delay the, the study uh, part if you'd like. Uh, same with uh, the gate going up on Rockview. We have mm -hmm. that funded to install in 2024, late 2024. But again, mm -hmm. we've we've gone this long without one. Uh, we could continue. That that's kind of our main area where we do experience theft if we yeah, have it. That's but stuff. yeah, that's so it, all both of those have to, well, not the study, but at least the. RV gate has to be um, coordinated with open path. And Correct. is that going to be um, ready? When, um, That's a good question. Um, I, I'd have to confirm how that would work with. It's a little bit different than the front gate because you're only issuing it to those that have RVs. Otherwise, during the day, it's, it's open. OK. So, you don't need to have code. Okay, okay. So it's yeah. different than the front gate, which everybody that's a resident would have to have yeah. open path. So okay. the timing wise is, is a little different. All the residents would need to get up to MOD in the years before everything is So, the, so like the gate is open during, during business the hours. Got it. Yeah, got it, it. it only would close yeah. weekends and nights when nobody mm -hmm. should be going up there unless yeah. you have a so, ha so, excuse me, having them in fourth quarter may actually push them into 2020. Yeah, we could defer it. Yeah. So. In, in her priority listing there, she put quarter four or 2025. Okay. So that's why you see. I can add a little yeah. bit. It's being the study, these two items uh, don't require too much study. It's not like a, a building. It's a, right, you're right, doing it, right? Right. Are you doing it? I think I am. I didn't know if it was a staff study or a uh, uh, study. coordination. Uh, the the oh. things would be would be uh, working with Tom. Tom Cashin. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already done that. I discussed it with him. Overall program, we'd have to double check with city planning and the manufacturer of the gates. 
to give to an accurate cost estimate. But the full drawings and that type of thing um, wouldn't be needed it's at that not. point. Okay. Right, just as something very simple schematics okay. would do for a cost estimate. All right. So are there any so, other so, items? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, uh, so have we done it? <laughs> well, I think we still have more stuff, right? So I think that's all we need today. Is that all we, need? we will for, we will move forward machinery and equipment and the current priority one minus the land use study. We'll coordinate a capital tour. Um, we'll come back to you then. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll come back to you before or once we receive the pickleball to give it a little bit of time, but certainly if, if something comes up and we need to press forward with an item that is currently down lower priority two, three, a pump or something, we'll come to you certainly sooner. But otherwise, we'll plan on coming to you once we have the pickleball with more of the complete list. We'll have a better idea of MTFs. We'll know if finance is going to recommend any adjustment to the MTF fee further, the number of sale estimates. We'll know pickleball. I think we'll, we'll be in a better position to consider the remainder of the list and timing wise. Yeah. Now, how does that plan jive with finances look? They're going to look at the whole thing as if we're going to proceed, correct? Right, so they'll look at the, the uh, spreadsheets that are started off with. They'll look at the assumptions of the number of MTFs. Do we need to uh, adjust the MTF fee based on this list of projects uh, in order to fund it with the ultimate goal of getting to 2026, 20, 27 to fund the medical center? Uh, what, what do we need to do? Do we need to scale back sooner, later, make adjustments. That's kind of what their analysis will be. Okay. All right, thank you everybody. You are welcome. Le Leanne, could yes. I ask for one item uh, in, t in time for the finance committee? Sure. On, the, on the, the reserve fund cash flow statement where it shows capital projects of 6.6 .6 million, since we're now looking at it by priority, it would be nice to see that broken out by priority number so the finance committee can evaluate if we only do one priority one or we move to priority two, et cetera. Hmm. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. There's nothing else. I think we'll move on to uh, new business. 8D or B, sorry. So, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Can we I like this put up the. Go to the picture attachment exhibit B um, just below 8B5. So as we're talking about uh, funding and where do we get some resources towards uh, 2026, 27, when we're looking at the medical center and uh, conversion and other priorities that may come up in the facilities master plan, if we're talking about the uh, food and beverage study, does that require any investment uh, in facilities and, and other adjustments? We're obviously short uh, funding. Uh, what are some, some options, opportunities? This uh, item is really intended to look at what are some of those possible options. Uh, we're not proceeding at this point because this is something that really the community will have a great deal of input and thought about. Uh, but uh, the concept here is to do what's called a yield study uh, for two parcels that GRF currently owns, uh, one being the current site of the Garden Club that is outside of the gates accessed by Tice Valley Boulevard. 
You can see that one up there. It is behind the trellis home development and the parcel is shown in yellow. What is the ability to consider selling a parcel such as this? And what is the value of it? Doing a yield study would take and have a, a company, uh, a firm, uh, in this case, uh, ELA, LCA Architects, uh, they would look at the current zoning, the land planning, what uh, is possible, what could you fit on that based on the, the zoning and, and land use information. Based on that, what is the value if we engage somebody like Colliers to, to market the, the site? Uh, so this is kind of a very preliminary first step in order to understand what is possible with the city based on their their land use designations and, and planning and what would we expect to potentially gain by selling this can you fit 15 homes there modeled similar to trellis can you fit 25 can you fit 50 i, I don't know the answer to that um, and what the yield is really determines what the value is How, how many hoops would they need to go through in order to get a parcel like this entitled so they can develop it? Uh, is it is it possible based on the current you know, designations? Utilities that are available, all of that stuff is kind of an analyzed in this type of study. Um, the second parcel, if we go to, is um, at the corner of Gray Eagle Drive and Terra Granada Drive. Uh, it's currently open space that slopes down, but there's significant uh, land there that is potential. When Rossmore was initially uh, approved, it was for, I think, just over 7,000 homes. We're at 6,700 now, approximately. So, you know, there is potential in what the development agreement would be, all of that has to be analyzed. Uh, again, there's a lot of a review of what the planning documents would be and need to be, but assuming that you could get that approved, uh, what, what is the yield possibility of that site? Uh, that is the site that probably you would sell to a developer and it would become a new mutual and you would have uh, increased potential for membership transfer fees plus whatever the uh, initial sale of the land would be. You would have obviously then a spread of the, the coupon, the GRF portion of the coupon to additional residential units. But it also means if you have more people living here, there's more demand for amenities and services and access and all of those other things. So there's a lot to consider in, in terms of that, uh, what you may be thinking about. If you're looking at the garden club site, you're looking at probably a site that you would sell and then it would be outside of uh, the future of Rossmore. It wouldn't be part of uh, the planning here. Two different sites to give you kind of two different uh, ideas of potential and you know, significant resources that could be used then for you know, future uh, projects identified in the, in the master plan. This is a very preliminary step to kind of give you an idea of what is even there, what would it take, what is possible, what is the value. Uh, obviously with the garden club site, and I did meet with the garden club folks, so they're they, at least the president, so we wouldn't like just be hitting them upside the head with this going, at least twice. Um, but there are, there's about two or three sites within Rossmore that you, you can maybe take and move that to, uh, we haven't analyzed that. Further analyzing those is not part of this study. Obviously we would have to find a place for the, the garden clubs, uh, future home for, for them. Uh, and then relocate that. I'm sure that may generate a lot of questions with the folks there, but they, as long as they know that, yes, we realize that's an asset that we would have to relocate. Um, 
So that's kind of the, the gist of this. It would be, you know, initiating a, a study to kind of learn about what's what's even out there as a possibility. Okay, mm -hmm. questions? Maxine? So I've always heard, I guess it's not a rumor, that Rossmore was entirely built out because we had to have a certain percentage of our land be open space. How does that piece so that's kind of what this study also would have to look at is what are those original agreements and, and documents and you know, there's no. always uh, planning and city council that can amend those uh, their willingness to Fred jump in here if I'm uh, talking no, out of turn no but, no no you're right yeah, uh, you apply for a variance um, it, it would yeah. depend on what type of what? changes right you, you've got the uh, uh, if it's zoned for commercial and no housing, you would have to go for a different type of right. planning change. Yeah, is it a general plan amendment and is a zoning amendment variance? There's a lot of possibilities that you would have to go through. This kind of will tell you how many hoops you'd have to jump through and then a potential developer would have to say, eh, that's not worth it or yes, that is worth it. Kind of deal. And that would also say your sales price. Right. Yeah, yeah. sure. The further we take it, the more value it would have to sell it. Like if you entitle a property, it has much greater value. Mm -hmm. There's certainly cost in planning and doing that, but different levels. So just to reiterate for residents' perspective, we're not acting on this. We're just right now trying to, if we agree, trying to find out what our options are and how valuable this land potentially might be. This is, this is information, uh, information to help with further consideration you know, down the road. This isn't, we're not putting it up for sale. We're not building new. We're not doing something different with the garden club at this point. This is strictly <clears throat> information. And just well, to continue that, like after we find out the information on both pieces, we would probably do, we would definitely do separate studies on each one to determine pros, cons, like <clears throat> adding more residents, you're going to have need for more employees, maintenance, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. that would come much later, right? Okay. As, as well as the, the city options. What's available. Um, Jeff, what did you mean when you said uh, a property would have more value if you entitle it. So there's a, a lot of planning process that you have to go through with the city. Uh, and it, it all depends on how the property is zoned, um, what all the designations it, it has. And the further along you get in the planning process, if you get city approvals or entitlements mm -hmm. to build certain things, okay. then you can sell it based on yeah. it's already approved. You can basically design, okay. go to the city, get your permits and go. If they have to do all of that work with it being yeah, unknown, well, really what will be approved, yeah. it has less value. Any other discussion? Somebody wanna make a motion? I move that we recommend that the board proceed with the land study, the yield study on the two parcels of land for $20,000 in the trust estate fund. I second. Okay. Roll call. Tamaji? Yes. Heinz? Yes. Meehan? Yes. Senior? All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, especially Jeff. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Thank and Dan. This is Dan's work here. Yeah. 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 It's really yeah. the yeah. priority yeah. stuff yeah. is great. Just for yeah, that, that really helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this document is really good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I said Jeff. Is it Dan? Yes. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> um, we are adjourning to the meeting of the planning committee. Uh, <laughs> In the response, there we go.